Good morning. Let's all stand as we worship our King today. Good morning, everyone. It sure is good to see all of you here today. Um, wanted to tell you, um, we had a great VBS here, and I want to say thank you to everyone who supported VBS, who, who gave to it, who prayed for it, who brought food for all you guys that were working as volunteers, either in VBS or with me out there uh, shoveling mulch and doing all the landscaping things we usually do. And uh, even, even down <coughs> to uh, people, you know, that were just kind of working behind the scenes. We had a lot of those folks you never hardly saw, um, like in the kitchen and other places, registration and all. So all these people, I want to say thank you as a church. Amy, Amy, uh, one of our children's pastors, told me that we had 22 kids come forward at the call. So pretty cool. Some of our youth just got back from Colorado. They went there to lead the cause. I kind of want to say dare to share. Same kind of thing, isn't it? That would be a good name for it. Right? So there's two different things? Did Oh, she, I thought she said it's one company, and I'm like, oh, they do two things. Okay. Well, anyway, they just got back, and they had a marvelous time. They went out there to grow um, within themselves, to grow closer to God, and also uh, to learn how to share their faith. And actually, they went out, um, and, to, and they shared their faith. And I, I, I haven't heard all the stories yet. I've heard a couple, but one of them told me that they uh, went out, and she found someone, and she s said hi, and the woman says, hola. And it ended up she didn't know much uh, English. 
And the young lady didn't know much Spanish. So something I wouldn't have thought of, she pulls out her phone, and there's, there's an app for that. <laughs> and you can press it in there somehow or another, I don't know. But anyway, she would say something into her phone and gave it to the woman, and the woman could beat and read it in Spanish. And then she'd say something, and then it would translate it to English. Anyway, she shared, and the woman said she hadn't been in church for a long time. But after the talk, she thought she'd head back into church again. So, pretty cool. <laughs> My friends, we have an amazing church. And people were in ministry. The hands of love was sowing. Um, the the, um, the um, um, people putting out wheelchair ramps that, uh, of you all out there in the community. I think they put out five wheelchair ramps this week uh, for people that really need it. Now the hospitals even call and say, hey, we need a ramp because they can't go home without a ramp. And so it's, uh, you might say it's ramping up. Get it? <laughs> At that, I'm going to have you all sit down. Thanks for being here. Yeah, what is wrong with you? You're tired. You should always have sticks in your hands ready at a moment's notice. Yeah, now you'll just be banging on those things like animal on the Muppets. You know, animal's a pretty good drummer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's on TV. All right. Um, hey, guys, tonight we're going to the ball field where it's Christ Community Night at the Outlaws. That kind of, I don't know, a church going to an outlaw game? Think about it, outlaws? But anyway, we're going to go to support them. I think they're in first place in their league, by the way. And so we're going there tonight. 7 o'clock is the game time. Uh, da oh, I think David already left. But uh, anyway, um, you can buy, uh, his tickets were cheaper. They're $4. I already got mine. Rhonda and I will be there. And we're in the shade. I want you to know that. We've got a whole section just for us, uh, for the church. So come out and be with us. It'll be fun. Be able to see and maybe meet some new people at the church. So 7 o'clock tonight at the Outlaws Ballpark. Um, and then next Sunday, right after this service, we're going to have baptisms down at Shoal Creek. So if you would like to be baptized or would like to reaffirm your baptism, get with me or get one of, with one of the pastors, and we'll head out and we'll give me some time to change clothes and uh, say goodbye to everyone, then change clothes, and then we'll all head out, kind of caravan down to Shoal Creek where we do the baptisms, and we've got some private land down there. Um, and uh, it's all fixed up, I understand. There's a gravel walkway now, so it's, it's ready to go, and uh, what a great time to go down to the creek uh, for baptisms. And then the all-church float trip. Um, you can get a kayak or a canoe, or if you have a large family, you can do a raft, especially with little kids. Rafts don't fall over. You know, they don't flip. But anyway, we're going on the NRO, which is a spring-fed cold river. If it's, I think it's supposed to be 94 um, next, not this Thursday, but the next. It's supposed to be 94 and, and sunny, but you'll love anytime you're hot, just dip into that cool water. It's very clear water. I will be your guide. And so we have almost 60 people, last I saw, 60 people signed up. The sign-ups are back there on the small table, the black table. And so you have to flip several pages and find it. Put down whether you want a canoe, a raft, or some yaks. Um, and the kayaks are just $25.50. I'm getting a great deal from the outfitter because I know them so well. And it's paid to the church or to me when you, you know. But uh, anyway, um, we don't have to pay all the taxes because it's a church event. And they put a lot of taxes onto a kayak. All right. And um, one last thing, August 2nd, that's coming up pretty quick. August 2nd is the primary elections for the counties. Um, and how many of you live in Newton County? Very good. Um, if you're of voting age, I'd love for you to vote for Daniel Swim. I can't tell you to vote for him. I can just say that he's very active in this church. He, he is our head cook at Kayak Camp. He helps in Paul's Kitchen. And many of you know Daniel, what a great guy. I encourage people in this church and Christians in general to be active in their local government. School board. We've got two people on the school board from our church. I encourage 
um, city council mem to, to try for city council. We will support you immensely for that. And then, of course, this is county um, presiding commissioner, presiding commissioner Daniel Swim. And tell your friends and family who live in Newton County, too. Yeah, I think there's five people running. It's probably going to be a pretty close vote. So I'm just throwing that out for you. Um, and you can go and tell your friends and such. All right. Vote for Daniel. I don't know, are you? <laughs> I'd like to invite the ushers to come forward now and receive our morning tithes and offerings. If you're joining us for the first time this morning, we ask that you let the offering plate pass you by. We are happy to have you here as our guest. But for those of us that call this church home, this is our opportunity to worship the Lord with our giving. Let's pray. God, we thank you for all of the many ways that you bless and enrich our lives, all of the ways that you provide for our needs. We ask now that you would take these offerings and these tithes that we give back to you and that you would bless them and use them to build your kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Bob is going to lead us in our prayer time today. Um, prayers for travel mercies. We have a lot of people gone on vacation. I kept, even some of our staff are gone on vacation. In fact, the youth went to up to Pikes Peak, um, and they get up there, and it's terribly hot back here, remember? They get up to Pikes Peak, and they've all got their goat coats and jackets on. They're like, it's 48 degrees up there. I could use 20 minutes of that right in the middle of what we're going through to now, you know, but that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I love it when you put a sweatshirt on and so. Well, some prayers. Uh, Lindsay Evans had surgery. She is his home now. Diana Willard was in the hospital. She sound like Jurassic Park in the back of there. Anyway, huh? Yeah, well, if they throw them, they throw them meat, they settle down a little more. Um, Diana Willard was in the hospital. She is out now. And then Vicki Mines is asking um, for prayers. Um, she is going in this week for a heart procedure, and she, she wanted to, um, to have some prayers as she goes into that. All right, Bob? Father, we come into your presence this morning. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for the invitation. We thank you that you have called upon us and asked us to cast our care upon you because you care for us. I thank you for that, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you lend your ear to hear our prayers. I praise you, God. We ask this morning, Father, that you would Continue to heal uh, Lindsay, Diana, 
I pray, God, for continued healing for uh, Connie Caldwell. I pray, God, for Vicki Mimes as she has this procedure this week. I pray, Lord, your peace would be upon her and that she would have an assurance that all is well. I just ask you, God, to continue to restore, renew, refresh, and to bless these folks during their times of recovery. And Lord, we do pray for all the folks who are away from us traveling. We pray, God, that you'd be with them, that your favor would rest upon them, that they'd uh, be favored by people that they have to deal with during their, their uh, times away and during their travel. Keep them safe, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep your hand on them. Give them wisdom and grace, we pray. And Father, we continue to pray for our nation. We ask God that your hand would be upon those who are in positions of uh, authority and leadership. I pray, God, that you would work your will in and through them. I've read in your word, Father, that the mind of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And like rivers, you channel it according to your will. So God, I pray that you'd intervene and you'd work out your will. That your peace would be our portion. That you'd bless this nation. We pray, God, that your holiness would rest upon us once again. Revive us, O oh Lord, we pray. I pray, God, for continued blessings on the praise team as they lead us in worship and praise. I pray, God, your hand would be upon Chris as he delivers the word that you've given to him for us. And I pray, God, that we would have ears to hear, that we'd have minds to understand, and that, God, we would receive your word as it were from your very own mouth. I give you praise, God, for all your goodness and your mercy and for all these good things that we receive. I give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And now let us stand and lift our voices of praise and worship to our Heavenly Father. Rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have 
Father God, we do praise your name. Thank you for meeting us here. Thank you for sending your spirit so we may hear, we may believe. Now speak through your messenger. Anoint his words. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Several years ago, there was a company that was kind of a clearinghouse for magazines. 
Pag- magazines would send them info, and then they were responsible for sending it out by mail to renew your subscription and, and or to try to get someone to take a magazine. One day, though, their computer threw a glitch. That's the thing about technology. When it's working, it's great. When it's bad, everything's bad. And we've, we've lost our computer before, and the bulb went out one time. I mean, so I just deal with technology. I don't understand much of it. But this computer messed up. And it sent 9,734 actual mailers to inform a farmer, a rancher, in Powder Bluff, Colorado, that his subscription to the National Geographic had expired. (laughs) Now try to picture this. 9,734 individual junk mail. Can you imagine what the postal worker thought? (laughs) Well, this rancher, he sure got his attention. He was like, wow, they must really want my uh, my business. So he uh, dropped what he was doing. He traveled 10 miles to the nearest little post office he had, probably up in the high plains of Colorado. And he sent his money in for renewal with a short note along with it. He said, I give up. Send me your magazine. There's something about multiple requests that brings answers. So some of you guys that I haven't seen, you might be watching online, I haven't seen you in a while, get ready. You're going to have 9,734 cards from me this next week. That ought to do it. And if you don't come, then you'll get a visit from me. Uh-huh, that's scary. You want to go back into history? Yes, I do. It's old history books. And it's amazing source of of uh entertainment for me. Well, let's go back into the New Testament at this point. Jesus, you know, we were talking about this guy with all the 9,734 requests to renew. um, And he did it because he was getting tired of getting these letters in the mail. But Jesus talks about when we pray, that we should just keep praying praying and praying and praying and praying and praying. In fact, the Apostle Paul said, pray without ceasing, pray. That gives some advice to us and some counsel to us when we pray. Do we pray and we pray one time or do we pray two times or do we keep it up and just keep praying and praying and praying? I have found that sometimes um, when I'm praying, I tell God how to fix things. He doesn't take that too well. He usually works out something better than I could have imagined. But it is all good. Jesus here is talking about prayer. Right now in the Gospel of Luke, he is going to be talking about the Lord's Prayer. A very simple prayer that we can say, Our Father who art in heaven. Remember? Talked about that a few weeks ago. And then he goes into kind of a parable. A story that teaches about prayer. So here we go. Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight. Do not come to my house at midnight. I'm just saying. But then this evidently was the response of the friend that he comes to. He goes to midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to town. And I have no food for him. Remember, in the Eastern mindset, 
taking care of your guests or is your honor on online okay if you don't take care of them sometimes you know if you had a guest come in and you're in your eastern mindset you'd say hey take my bed i'll sleep on the couch oh here here here's Here's a roast beef that I got out of the freezer. We've been waiting on someone really nice to serve it to. And potatoes and all, you know, all the great things like, like pork rinds and stuff that you might put out for a guest. And so they would, and they would fill your wine glass over and over and over again. Remember how good a host they were goes to their honor and their family. And so they would take care of you. Well, here's a friend that comes in late night and knocks on your door and you take them in and they're like uh gosh we're kind of famished from all that travel and the convenience store was closed up the street so the guy was like oh no i don't have any bread made up i don't really have much you know in the pantry let me go to a friend's house and i'll be right back he goes to his friend's house bang 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 and the friend says who is it it's me and tells about the bread. I need some bread. And the guy, you know, he responds in Jesus' story. He says, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. More or less, don't wake the baby. Okay? I tell you, even the, and then Jesus continues on with his story, but with his commentary. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread, because of your shameless audacity, in other words, just keep banging and asking, banging and asking, he will surely get up to give you as much as you need because you kept banging. He said, He's saying he won't get out of bed and and give you your bread that you want simply because he's your friend, but because you won't go away and he's not going to go any sleep until he gives you what you want. Persistence in prayer is what Jesus is trying to say. He's telling us, go ahead, flood the airways with your prayer to God. It's about persistence. Isn't that kind of cool? One of the other Gospels talks about it, and the guy just won't stop banging on the door, essentially. And the guy gets up to give him what he needs just so he'll go away and he can get back to sleep. And he's saying basically for God, this is what we're supposed to do. Isn't that amazing? Kind of odd that Jesus would would teach this. But he did. On down, right after, I mean literally right after this, in verse 9 he says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. So maybe we should be persistent in our prayers do we pray once do we pray twice how many times do we pray how often do we pray how persistent are we in our prayers i believe that god answers our prayers you've heard me say this before i believe that god answers our prayers sometimes it's yes. Woohoo! A win for us. Sometimes God says, you know, in my own time or in a little while, I'll answer your prayer. Sometimes I think the prayer is no. And that's hard. Remember the country music song? Thank God for unanswered prayers. Who sang that? Garth? Garth? Yeah. Um, Garth and I are like that. We're buddies. Um, But thank God for unanswered prayers. You know, sometimes God says no because it's not something we need or it's not something that we need right now and that sort of thing. Like, you know, praying for a million dollars. Maybe you don't need that. But maybe God will find a way in other ways. And so I believe every time we pray, we receive an answer. 
It's not always the answer we want, though. Well, let's move back in time to a great story about a, a uniquely faithful woman named Hannah. I told the Walkinshaws, I said, well, I'm, I'm going to be talking about uh, their, their middle daughters named Hannah. And uh, she actually loves this story in 1 Samuel. Hannah is a young woman, but the problem right now for her in this, this story is that she cannot conceive a child. She is married to a real nice guy named Elkanah. Most people, most guys just call him Elk for short. In fact, he started a club years ago. Well, he started it, and he owned the first building, so he just called it the Elks Lodge. Elkanah loved her, apparently, from, from what we pick up on the story. Now, Elkanah, or Elk, had a problem. He was married to two women. Oh, some of you are like, oh gosh, yes. And those two women did this all the time. That's why Elk hung out at the Elk's Lodge all the time. <laughs> and since this story, pretty much we've learned you just marry one at a time, right? You just want one wife, right guys? Um, I told my wife, I said, hey, why don't we move to Utah and I'll get married to lots of different girls. She said, you'll never make it to Utah alive. So I'm still married to just Rhonda. In fact, our anniversary is coming up 42 years, and we've known each other for a little bit longer than that. When we were five, she decided she was going to marry me. True story, ask her. True story. We were at a birthday party together, and she was making eyes at me, and she, she stalked me from then till high school. So ask her. Oh, good. Good. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Well, Paniah was the name of the other lady that Elkaniah was married to. And she would make little barbs toward Hannah. And Hannah, I don't think, was very aggressive. I, I think she just kind of took it all in and took the abuse. But Paniah would say, oh, I've got to get ready because my son's playing in the T-ball championship. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot, Hannah. You don't have any children. Well, Hannah, can you help me make a cake? Um, my oldest son, it's his birthday tomorrow. Oh, wait, maybe you don't want to because you don't have any kids. You wouldn't understand. And Paniah was like that. And she would just constantly, and the Bible says she constantly did this to Hannah. And Hannah was so sad. And remember in biblical days, to not have a child was kind of a stain on, or a blemish on who you were as a woman. And so she so much wanted to have a kid. And Paniah knew that. And Paniah would always make little comments. Well, if you only had children, you would understand. And things like that. Elkanah, as I said, he was a pretty nice guy. <clears throat> he found Hannah crying. And her husband would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you so downhearted, or what we would call depressed nowadays? And then he'd say, don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Aren't I a catch? Hey! Trying to brighten her mood up. She's like, nah, not really. No. That's, that's not in here. That's the gospel according to Chris again. It comes out every once in a while. But I always like to put myself in their place. What is Hannah going through? 
And then you can begin to understand the feelings and the emotions behind a person like this. Well, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her, which she did apparently. And this went on year after year after year after year. Well, Hannah, we know, was a person of faith because of her prayer life. And some of her prayer life is demonstrated in the pages of the Old Testament. Now remember, this is before the times of the kings. This is very early in the people of Israel living in the Holy Lands. Well, she went up to a high holy place called Shiloh. Shiloh, and in, in, in this time period, there was no temple yet. That didn't come about till Solomon. And so there's no temple, um, and, and the, so the people would worship where they could, and usually it was up on top of a hill, kind of like Christ community sits on the, one of the tallest hills in Joplin, right? And it was like a church. People would come, and they would worship, they would pray, and by the way, guys, you can come any time and pray. Uh, a lot of times not much is going on here. Sometimes the preschool's in here playing, sometimes other groups. And, um, but for the, uh, most of the time, it, it's quiet in here. You can come in and, and kneel and pray right here. Sometimes I come in, there's someone praying right here. We have a prayer chapel just down the way, down the hallway, where you can go. There, there's a, um, a, a kneeling rail, um, but just don't come when it's really, really hot because we can't keep the air on it it's all glassed in and such and it gets really hot in there so during normal times yes and then we also have the prayer area out there um, just off the the western side of the parking lot just basically straight out that way you'll see it we in fact our team that were was doing landscaping we remulched that area made it look kind of nice picked it up a little bit anyway it's got a large cross it's got a kneeling bench and some other benches to sit on. Some people, they'll just pull up in their car and sit and pray, um, looking at the cross. And it's just a great time to sit and pray. Well, Hannah went to Shiloh to pray. There was a man there named Eli. Eli was like the, 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 the pastor of the church, you might say. They call him a priest. But he was there. Um, he kind of ran things there at Shiloh. And so I always looked at, look at him as the pastor of Shiloh Church. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly now think about her praying I, I, I see her as up kneeling somewhere she might have been standing I don't know they would do different ways back then but I see her kneeling and she's bawling she's not just crying the we weeping bitterly means you're bawling I mean, the whole snot running down your nose, that sort of thing. Paint you a good picture there, didn't I? That's what the arm's for. She was weeping bitterly. And she made a vow to God saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on the servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. Now, if you don't understand what she's saying there, that, that sounds weird, right? In other words, she was going to dedicate her son. If she were to have a son, she's going to dedicate her son to God. And he would be a servant of God the rest of his life. And no razor touching his head. Back in the day, this was a Nazarite vow. And a Nazarite would never cut their hair or their beard. They just let it all grow. They would not drink alcoholic beverages. And they wouldn't touch dead things. And that was kind of some of the Nazarite vows. In the Old Testament, Samson was a Nazarite. That's why he didn't cut his hair, remember? 
because he had taken those vows that that would never happen. And that's why Delilah kept saying, Samson, tell me your power and strength. What's the secret? She talked just like that. I wouldn't trust a woman that talked like that. But, and Samson finally told her, well, it's my hair. And so she got out a razor while he was sleeping. And then in the New Testament, we see most likely anyway that John the baptizer was a Nazarite. Remember, he had the long hair and he would be out in the middle of the Jordan and he'd eat um, wild honey and locust, grasshoppers. And he looked a sight because he would have had this long hair coming down everywhere. And he would have had this long, full beard hanging off his chin with grasshopper legs in it and a little bit of wild honey right there. I don't know, wind getting windy in here, isn't it? And so the, I imagine John the baptizer would have looked like Hagrid from the Harry Potter series. You know, just, you know, and hair everywhere, matted almost. That's probably what he looked like. And so Hannah said, if I will become pregnant, I promise I will dedicate this baby to you, and this baby will serve you the rest of of his life well she kept praying for a long time apparently Hannah was and I I love this part Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving but her voice was not heard she was silently praying but her lips were moving for the words and remember she's weeping She's, she's distressed. She's crying. Looks like raindrops coming off her cheeks. And she's, she's praying through her heart. And she's mouthing words but not saying anything. And it's interesting in the New Testament it says that even when we groan, the Holy Spirit will interpret that prayer. In other words, even if we don't have the words that we want to say in our prayer, the Holy Spirit will take that and interpret it to God. That's pretty cool. And this is what she's doing. She's praying and she's praying and she's praying. As I said, in 1 Thessalonians, Paul says, pray without ceasing. Pray. In James 5.16, it says, prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. An old preacher, he was a Quaker preacher, um, named Elton Trueblood. There he is. He said, whatever is worth worrying about is worth praying about. Do you worry? Then pray about it. If worry takes up your mind, then turn that time over to God in prayer. Whatever is, whatever is worth worrying about is worth praying about. And Hannah dared that her prayer would be heard. God, please. Well, Eli, the preacher, remember? The preacher was watching her for a while, going, that gal just ain't right. I mean, that's kind of what he said. He came up to her and he said, How long are you going to stay drunk? I mean, she's unlike anyone he had seen in prayer. Maybe they would say their words out loud. I don't know. But he thought she was drunk with too much wine in the morning. And he said, Put away your wine. Well, that sounds like a harsh preacher, doesn't it? Of course, I've told people that too. When they actually were drinking, okay? Because personally, I don't have any time for alcohol. I think it makes normal people stupid. And she answered Eli. She's Eli's the preacher, remember? And she turns and she says, "Not so, my lord. I am a woman who is deeply troubled." 
I have not been drinking wine or beer, you know, before he thinks, oh, well, not wine, but so she hadn't been drinking anything. I was, and she says, I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. I want to read that sentence again. That's pretty cool. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Have you ever been so distressed and you go to prayer and you pour out your soul to God? What a great description from the words of Hannah of what's going on when you pray. She said, do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. And at this point, Eli's like, oh man, I goofed up as the preacher. And so he said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant, grant you what you've asked of him. In other words, he was blessing her. He may have even put a hand on her shoulder and said, go in peace and may God grant you what you've been praying for. And Hannah walks out. Now remember, please understand, she is in the same circumstances as she had before she went in to pray. Paniah is still waiting for her jabs. She still is not pregnant. She is still in the same house, the same life that she had before she went to pray. But something has changed. She says, then she went away and ate something. Maybe she hadn't eaten for a long time. So in other words, she was feeling better about her situation in life. She was feeling better, and it says, and her face was no longer downcast. She didn't look at her problems. She didn't look at her life in a bad way. She wasn't down. She wasn't depressed. She didn't look down at the ground. Rather, she looked up. She was no longer downcast. You see, again, her circumstances had not changed from the time she went in to pray. Sometimes, my friends, prayer changes us, not the situation. Would you agree with me? Okay. Sometimes prayer changes us. It changed her totally. And when we go to prayer... Maybe God might change us too. And sometimes when God changes us, we deal with things totally differently. Things work out differently than we think they would. Well, I want you to know. Let's move on to the end of the story. Great story. She ended up pregnant soon after. She had a son and named him Samuel, which means God heard me. I mean, back in the biblical days, all these names meant something. And it means God heard me. She named him Samuel and was, it was so overjoyed. Here's the, the final thing of her prayer. I mean, she, she was able to hold her son. Paniah couldn't make smart remarks to her anymore. When Samuel grew up just a little bit as a boy, he was brought to Shiloh. There's a picture of Samuel, and it's about the time that he's going to go to the temple. And he would be further raised in the temple. Not temple, really, but that church in Shiloh. And he would become one of the most famous prophets of the Old Testament. He would anoint kings when he's an adult. He would anoint Saul, the first king of Israel. He would go and later anoint David as the next king of Israel. His power and influence and wisdom grew. Everyone, even other countries, knew about Samuel. And all this came about 
because of the prayer of a young woman who prayed her soul to God. Pretty cool story, huh? Now, as I share about her, I want to ask, how is our faith matching to that of Hannah? How is your prayer life? Could you match her prayer life? Maybe. Maybe not. But we are called to pray. To pray ceasingly. And I couldn't end this message of prayer or about prayer without prayer. Let's, let's pray. God, amazing things happen when we are faithful. And one of those ways of being faithful is praying. And yes, it may not change our circumstances some days, but it will certainly change us. God, when the world builds up against us, when Monday morning smack us in the face, when we have difficulties in life and finances or relationships or with our children or maybe something that happened a long time ago and we can't let it go, we can't forget it and it keeps robbing us of our joy. God, You have said that when we're in that kind of a situation, we are to pray. And to pray again, and to pray, and to pray, and to pray, and to pray. And God, uh, may we be a people of prayer. May this church be known as a place of prayer. And as we lift up our souls to You, O God, and we cry out of our heart to You, may You hear our prayer and bring about amazing things. I pray this. In Jesus' name, and we all say, Amen. We please rise to receive the benediction today. Jesus tells us to go and make disciples of all people, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and share with them all that I have given you. Amen. Mm-hmm.